Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm tier ranking all of the thrillers that I personally read in 2023. You guys voted and wanted me to separate these into the thrillers and then like the cozy mysteries I read, just in case you prefer one genre or the other. I will link the cozy mystery one above if you like both genres, but we're gonna hop into the thrillers. I have over 60 that I read last year and there were some doozies, so let's hop in. Yeah, so we have, I think, 63 thrillers here. And my tier ranking, we have the best at the top, fantastic, which are like solid four stars, really love, would really recommend, average to good. These are ones that I enjoy. I don't regret reading them. I would recommend them depending on like if it's a specific trope or something you like. The eh category, which is just like no, wasn't really like a favorite or one I would probably go back and reread or like recommend myself to read if I had the choice. And then DNF or dislike is the very bottom tier. So starting off, we have A Stranger in the House by Sherry Lupina. This was just in the average for me. We have other Sherry Lupinas on here, so let's hit those real quick. We have Everyone Here is Lying. That one, wow, the ending for that, so incredibly satisfying. Oh my goodness, that one had me on the edge of my seat. I loved Everyone Here's Lying. A Stranger in the House was just more kind of generic to me. Like, I remember bits of it, but it wasn't anything, like, spectacular. It was still fun. Like, I had a good time reading it. And then the other one is An Unwanted Guest. I just finished that for in December. That was really good. I would put that in Fantastic. I had a really good time with that. It's kind of a thriller and a whodunit because you have like one by one guests are dying in this remote isolated snowed in like hotel and it's it's really suspenseful I loved the ending for it I thought it was really good so actually so she so far has been a really strong writer for me I look forward to reading more of her this year Beneath the Service by Kara Ruda this was I'm gonna say good it's like on the higher end of this tier it's definitely enjoyable it's like a 3.5 for me I just read another book by her which will be coming up in a reading vlog if it's already posted I'll link it above but so far I'm enjoying her writing style it's definitely very more like family drama suspense the thrilling elements do take a little longer to develop but I found it to be a good fun read Dark Corners I loved this this was brilliant I was so impressed by this, my brain and mind, and speaking of The Night Swim, which is by the same author, that one is fantastic for me. Dark Corners was even better. That one absolutely blew my mind. I actually read that one first and then went back and read The Night Swim because it's part of the same series, which follows a podcaster, like a true crime podcaster, and she gets into these different cases and ends up in thrilling situations as a result. I love Dark Corners because that one involves like it's like beach and these influencers and these influencer like events and stuff and an inmate and it was very very high stakes the night swim was also very good the ending for that was just it was really good i would recommend both of those dirty laundry i just kind of eh i wanted to love this it it's basically set on this like neighborhood like a suburban neighborhood kind of like a wealthier neighborhood and you're following around multiple neighbors um and it's just it was fine like I liked learning about the different women we were following around I thought they were fleshed out well but there really wasn't like a thriller storyline in my opinion and I felt like the ending was really pretty obvious it was very slow it felt more like kind of a neighborhood drama I guess so it was I liked the writing I thought it was well written I just don't feel like it was really a thrilling thriller which is kind of what I wanted so I would consider reading more from this author. I think this was her debut. I would definitely try her again in the future because I thought her writing was really just beautiful the way it flowed, but not my favorite. Gone Girl, I knew the twist going into this and it still blew me away. It absolutely blew me away. There were so many things about this. I understand why this was such a sensation and led to so many just retellings of this kind of story and everything and I absolutely adored it. It was so intense. Her writing is very like addictive to me. I just found it like I could not put the book down. It was so good. Even if you know the twist because I know this came out in 2012 and there's been a movie and a lot of talk online about it, I would still recommend like reading it because I was still so invested in the story even though I knew it. So it was just it was so good. Good Bad Girl by Alice Feeney. This was an eh. I am really sad to say. I have other Alice Feeney on this list that we'll get into, but this was her new release last year. 
it, it just it kind of like the dirty laundry it just kind of felt like more of a suspense drama not really a thriller and we were following around multiple women some of them are mothers it was kind of about mother like daughters and mothers and like their connections and stuff and there was like a nursing home with someone who disappears and it just didn't really feel very high stakes. I wasn't really in love with any of the characters, nor did I really have, I didn't really have strong opinions, because I can read a thriller that has characters that I all dislike, as long as they're entertaining. But they weren't that entertaining, that was the problem. Like, you either need to make me really like them, and or they need to be entertaining. That's, the, for me at least. I Know Who You Are by Alice Feeney, oh my goodness. <laughs> this was in my worst books of 2023, I'll link that above. I wish I could burn this book out of my mind. Um, I won't give away why because it's part of the reveal but if you know <laughs> I was so at, but this was a case of an author in my opinion making a twist so outrageous and disgusting that just for like shock value but it was just beyond disgusting. Um, I thought the premise of it was really good, actually. I was really invested for about half of it, and then it just kept going downhill. There was also a lot of flashbacks that had a lot of, like, child, like, abuse and stuff, and that was really hard to read. So definitely, if you want to read this, as with any thriller, I would recommend looking up trigger warnings, but this one, please, if you're going to read it, please look up the warnings. I wish I had... Um, I feel bad though, I've like been going off on Alice Feeney and I actually really like most of her books. Where is... Sometimes I Lie. That one was absolutely fantastic. So let's give Alice Feeney some love because I actually really like almost everything else I've read by her. Sometimes I Lie involves this woman, she's in a coma, she can hear things though, and she thinks that her bro her like husband or sister is responsible for her being in the coma and you go into this also knowing that she's going to be an unreliable narrator based on the title it's very high stakes I've never read anything quite like it it was very very interesting and very suspect like so thrilling my heart couldn't stop the other one his and hers this one is all one of my all-time favorite thrillers I absolutely love Alice Sweeney's His and Hers. We were reading from his and her perspective. They're back in this small town and they both have connections to this victim, a young woman who's found in a car murdered. And it's so incredibly good. The ending for this, oh, I like barely pieced it together, but it was so good. The reveal for it, oh, I loved it. Absolutely one of my favorite thrillers I've ever read. So definitely in the top top of that. I'm not done with you yet by Jesse Q. Satanto. I'm gonna put that in fantastic. I really enjoyed that. I feel like I was missing a little something from it but it's definitely a strong four stars. I really love her, this author's writing style. I've also read a cozy mystery by her and I just plan on devouring everything she's come out with because everything has been four or five stars from her that I've read and this one was intense. It involves a lot of like it's a very psychological thriller. It was super interesting. I don't even think I could sum it up without giving anything away, but it was so incredibly good. I was blown away by parts of the ending. It was just so high stakes. No Exit by Taylor Adams. I'm going to put this in a strong, like, good. This one is extremely, like, particularly, I know thrillers in general, they're not cozy, but this one was particularly graphic. Like, I will say that right off the bat. Keep that in mind. Very, very, like, violent, but... I mean, when I tell you, like, from page one, you are on the edge of your seat. The basic premise of this is this, like, college-aged young woman is, like, driving back home because she finds out her mom has cancer and she's dying. And the roads and conditions are very bad. There's a huge snowstorm, and basically she has to pull over at a rest stop. Well, at the rest stop, she finds that one of the cars has a child locked in it. Like, in a cage. So she knows that someone at the rest stop this must be this that must have like abducted this child but she doesn't know who she can't escape because the weather conditions are so bad these people are all stuck together so the stakes are just rising and rising and rising I don't know if I've ever been so physically on the edge of my seat like it was so deeply uncomfortable and like high stakes but in the best way for like a thrilling read so yeah the other one I read by him though this year was the last word and I absolutely I DNF'd this I honestly I love the premise. The premise is that an author is like harassing this reader who leaves a negative review of their work and it's really scary as someone who likes to review books so I think it's a really great premise for anyone reading it because we've all 
you know, whether you talk about books online or you review on Goodreads or even you just tell someone else in your life about it, we've all reviewed a book at one time or another, so it's a really great premise. But I just found myself sitting there like, this is the most, like, wacky, weird, like, it was just all over the place to me. I did not get sucked in. I know a lot of people really loved it. I think I'm in the minority there. Let me know if you didn't like it or if you loved it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But I just remember sitting there like, what am I reading? Was kind of my impression and I just didn't love it. So I kind of, I ended up DNFing it. Um, stay awake. So this one, I'm going to say, I'm going to say a strong good. Not quite fantastic, but a very strong good. Like I would definitely recommend this. Basically the main character wakes up in like a cab and she's trying to like take it to go home to her apartment and she sees on her arm like she's written in like sharpie like stay awake and basically every time she falls asleep she can't remember like the last two years of her life which is horrifying um <laughs> i felt like some parts of this were a little easy to call but it was so like high stakes on uh, like page turning i had a really fun time reading this so i definitely would recommend it if you think that premise sounds good check it out the co-worker i enjoyed this i'm gonna say fantastic was it the most unique thing I've ever read, no, and I have heard some mixed things about this author and possibly them not being very ethical with their writing. Let me know if you have more insight into that. I'm trying to look into that, um, and I didn't know that going into this book, but I did enjoy this. I thought it was a fun read. Uh, basically, we have a, a main character we're following around. She's kind of like the golden girl. She works at this vitamin company. She's got the boyfriend. She's got the looks. She's got the money. She's got the, she's the top saleswoman, all that stuff. One day, her co-worker Dawn doesn't show up, and Dawn is a very, she's described as a very, like, odd person. She's very, very structured. She seems to be maybe like my my inference was that maybe she's autistic possibly it's never really explicitly said but she disappears and you follow this co-worker as she's getting involved in Don's case so I had a really good time with this I thought it was fun I thought it was well written I thought the characters were interesting I followed as you're following the character you're learning about some of her other co-workers and I just found all the people to be very interesting like I would love to watch a movie with this plot line I think it would be fun House in the Pines by Anna Reyes. This one is, it's it's got to be in the top two for me. It's definitely a slow burn thriller. You have to be a little more patient with it, but the payoff for me at least, I, I think it's got to go in the best. Honestly, it freaked me out so much. The ending for this personally played with something that I'm very like freaks me out. So that probably helps. But our main character basically goes home and she is basically um, trying to figure out something that happened in her past where her friend died in front of her eyes and she strongly suspects it's this man named Frank's fault but Frank never laid a hand on her friend like there's nothing to suggest that and she's also got these memory issues she doesn't really remember things clearly so she's really trying to explore this past and it's very interesting very character driven but I really liked it the last party I ended up doing nothing this was more of like a detective based thriller and I just found that one of the main characters were following him and he I kept like hinting that there were all these unique things about his past and like dark things and then when they came out I was so underwhelmed I was like that's it <laughs> I don't know I just wasn't very interested in it I didn't find the story to be that engaging I was pretty bored so I ended up DNFing it around the halfway point the engagement party I had a really good time with this I'm gonna say I'm gonna say fantastic. I think this this book doesn't do anything that's like horribly unique, but it does it really well. The tropes are basically that you have like our main character, she's fallen in love with her man Murray, and they're so excited, they're engaged after like a whirlwind romance, and his fabulously wealthy family who she's never met, like fabulously wealthy, like North Carolina's most fabulously wealthy, famous family kind of wealth, invites them to an engagement party and they go and things start to happen a guest dies at the party there's all of this drama they're trapped there with the family i really enjoyed this is it like i said is there anything that's going to be like especially shocking if you're like a avid thriller reader i don't think so but i think you'll have a really fun time with it it just was a really fun entertaining read which is what i value the most for thrillers no one needs to know by lindsay cameron this was a dnf for me unfortunately i got a little over halfway through this, we're following around different points of views for this, and it's basically like this very wealthy neighborhood in New York. There's this website where people leave anonymous secrets and have like a discussion board, and these are like 
serious secrets like cheating, financial scandals, like big time secrets, well their secrets are exposed and leads to all this drama. I just, I felt like the author started to mix up details part of the way through the book and then I also just found that the secrets as they were coming out I was like yeah I called that, like I called, like I just didn't, I wasn't really that interested, I was kind of bored. I liked a lot of the characters but I just wasn't immersed enough in the actual plot to really continue the book so that's why I ended up DNFing. The personal assistant, that was just kind of average for me. That was one of the first, I think that was the first thriller I read this year. I remember parts of it. I thought the ending was a little ridiculous if I remember my kind of initial opinions. But basically we have like an influencer and her personal assistant runs off and like hacks her account and stuff. And there's a lot of drama. I found that to be interesting. I liked the first half, I remember. I thought it was very strong, but then the ending was just kind of, it was a little out there for me. I didn't love the ending as much. So it's just kind of average, like... Nothing that I regret reading, but something I wouldn't strongly recommend, probably. The Intern, however, I will put that in Fantastic. I really had a good time with that. I thought the ending was well done. I loved the main character. I thought she was very interesting, very realistic. I liked following her. I felt like the pacing for the story was really good. Like, you're definitely feeling the pressure and, like, suspense as you're reading. Same thing with the trade-off. I have a couple Sandy Jones on here. The trade-off was good. I... Wow. We have The Trade-Off by Sandy Jones, and then we also have The Half-Sister. That one was... Mm, I'm gonna say that was like more in the average for me. It was still a good read. I still had fun with it. What I like most about Sandy Jones is I feel like if I'm in a reading slump, she is just such a bingeable writer. I feel like her writing is just so fast-paced, super bingeable. If you're in the mood for like more of like a beachy read or you need a break from some heavier stuff, I feel like her books are really bingeable and that's fun for me. The Half-Sister, I just remember being like, okay, this is good, I liked it, but it wasn't great. The trade-off was more fun. The first mistake, however, that best. I, when I say the, the, the twist, like some of the twists for this, my jaw was like actually on the floor. It was so such a good book. I absolutely was stunned by aspects of this book. I had no idea and it was just so, it was so like, the way it was delivered felt like splash of water, cold water in the face. I was just shocked like sitting there reading it. Couldn't put it down. It so good. The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. I have a couple Ruth Wares on here. This one was in, it was good. I thought there was some, I thought there was like a plot hole or so with this that I couldn't quite let it like lay to rest in my head but I loved the premise so much we're on a cruise ship so very remote isolated there is this um lady we're following she's like a reporter or like magazine writer or something like that and she sees this woman in cabin 10 but then the next day the woman's not there and she'd heard a splash overnight so she thinks the, she thinks the woman has been like murdered and thrown overboard but everyone on the ship insists that this woman never existed so I really love the premise I do think there were some issues with the plot but overall I still had a good time with it in a dark dark wood I also really enjoyed by her this was one of her earlier books and I I would say I definitely could tell it was like one of her earlier books in terms of the writing quality but this one I think was a little stronger in the delivery. Overall I think the plot was better. It was really high stakes but the one that got me was the turn of the key. That, oh my goodness, I think that was one, that's one of the best thrillers I read this year. It was absolutely so just heart pounding. We have like a young woman who's a nanny and she gets hired to be a full-time nanny at this like huge estate with these young two like young daughters and the parents have to leave like shortly after which wasn't planned and she starts hearing things and she's being watched all the time because there's all this smart te smart technology that's like integrated into the house which I find really creepy I think that's so creepy and it's really disturbing so that one was really good the woman in the library I I didn't like this at all honestly I did finish it but I was so let down. It's like kind of described as like a book within a book. Um, and basically these main characters are at a library when someone is murdered, but they were like all sitting there. Like, so it's kind of like a closed, like how could this murder have happened? And then one of the characters was writing a book. I thought the book part was really unnecessary. It felt really weird to me at least. I know, I feel like this is a book I see people online either say they like love it or hate it. And I just, I hated it. I really was like, what did I just read? 
the ending threw me. I felt like it kind of unhinged a lot of what it had just established the ending was and then the like the who and stuff I was kind of like yeah okay I got that like I don't know I just wasn't a fan of this personally. Thicker Than Water this was just like average for me. It was about two sister-in-laws as they're trying to they're kind of learning about the um, brother slash husband that binds them together and that he's maybe not such a good guy and it's about their relationship and I found that to be really interesting. A, more of like a family drama with thrilling aspects but very fun. I enjoyed it. The last thing he told me, this was a book my mom lent me. I would say fantastic. I had a really good time. Hard to put this down. Basically this man up and leaves like disappears from his I don't know if this is wife his girlfriend wife or girlfriend and his step his daughter who is her stepdaughter and the last thing he tells her is like protect her protect his daughter and he just leaves and it's just there's so many questions there's so much happening it was a very interesting read I really enjoyed watching the relationship between the like wife and daughter as well so that was really interesting when I'm Dead, I would also put in Fantastic. That was a book of the month pick for me. We basically have like our main characters who are the parents of a teenage daughter and they're both involved in like police work. One of them is like a coroner. She like examines bodies. She's like a forensic expert and the other one is like I think more of like a police officer and one day she is examining her daughter's best friend who's like the same age and everything and then they can't find their daughter really interesting premise very high stake ending like super intense i really really enjoyed that one none of this is true by lisa jewel i would also say again a fantastic read i really enjoyed that i had some answers that i felt i wanted some like i had some questions at the end of this that i felt like i still wanted some answers to but overall really good very interesting very very dark i would especially recommend maybe some trigger warnings for this one but very good it was my first lisa jewel and i definitely want to read more from her this year so if you have a recommendation from that author or any other author that you love for thrillers let me know the quiet tenant that it's gotta go in the best. I actually forgot to put it in my 23 best of 2023. I'll link that above. I meant to, but this one is actually about a serial killer. And instead of like reading from the detective's point of view or like the parents who are trying to find like the victim, we're actually reading from three women who are in his life. One is his daughter, teen daughter. One is a woman he's captured and like abducted and she's in his house and she's just kind of waiting to be killed. And then one is like a woman he's like flirting with in town who has no idea any of this and the daughter doesn't know either so you're reading from all these different perspectives and it's so fascinating to see the same man who you know is objectively a terrible person but from the different perspectives it's really strange but very interesting I really had a good time with it Zero Days by w Ruth Ware this one was just eh, it was fine it was her new release this last year it wasn't my favorite it's about um, like hackers basically and this woman is on the run after her husband who is a hacker is murdered she's on the run for her life and it's not normally a book I probably would have picked up except I love a lot of Ruth Ware's works so I picked it up knowing it was from her but I just it was okay I felt like the ending was a little easy to call I just didn't really love this like constant on the run element it just wasn't my type of thriller I think it could be really solid for a lot of people but it just wasn't for me personally Oh, The Other Woman by Sandy Jones. I forgot that one. That was really good. That one, I loved, like, the twist and conclusion for this one. I absolutely loved it. I was like, yes, amazing. Um, basically, The Other Woman is about an engaged couple. They're getting ready to get married, and the daughter-in-law-to-be is really intimidated because her mother-in-law is extremely possessive, extremely weird, and it's there's, like, all this tension. I mean, she might even be, like, dangerous. Like, like that's the level we're talking, like, really crazy. And it was really, it was really fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, I have some questions for you. That was a DNF. I just found that to be really boring. I got like 50, 60 pages in and like nothing had really happened. And I was just kind of like, okay, like I'm here. I don't know. I just, I wasn't really interested. I didn't really like the writing style personally. So I ended up putting it aside. The Stranger Upstairs, that one was really good. I had a fun time with that. We basically have this married couple and their marriage is failing, but this they, they move into this house that was like a murder house, like a murder had happened there, and the wife is like kind of an influencer, sort of. Like she's not really, I think the influencer part was kind of hyped up, but she blogs about like renovations and stuff. So she is writing about how they're renovating the house and while they're there, strange things start to happen and it's 
It's really good. I had a really fun time with that. What the neighbors saw, this was just... Yeah, I don't even remember much about it. I remember thinking it was decent, so I'm gonna say, like, average... I'm just gonna say eh, honestly, like, maybe 2.5 to 3. It was just okay. I just don't remember being that, like, enthralled with it. Every Value Break. This one was an absolutely insane kind of thriller. Definitely requires some disbelief, but it was good. Like, I had fun with it. It was crazy. It was wild. But it was entertaining, so I had a good time with it for that. We basically have this couple, they just got married, but the wife is keeping a secret, and that is that she cheated on her husband while she was on her, like, bachelorette party, like, right before they got married, and she's not going to tell him. And then they're on this island, which was his choice for the honeymoon, and strange things start to happen. There's, like, an unusual amount of men there compared to women, and it's just very unnerving, and you're just, the suspense is just, like, building and building the whole time like you have this pit in your stomach I really enjoyed this I thought it was fun definitely wild a very like you need to suspend some level of disbelief but definitely entertaining in my opinion the Hacienda by Isabella Canias this was really good this one horrified me it's I think a thriller leaning into horror so I think it's supposed to be a little bit darker and it did that really well it's historical fiction as well and it's described as Rebecca meets Mexican Gothic I haven't read Mexican Gothic but I have read Rebecca and I love it it's one of my favorite stories ever but I really enjoyed that it was very 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 scary I was so incredibly like on the edge of my seat during this I really like the main character she basically gets married to this man for financial security she's not in love with him He's got this huge house, much like Rebecca and Manderly, and there's rumors about that he killed his, like, first wife. And she's starting to get there, and these things are happening in the house, and they're very, very creepy. And the sister of the husband actually lives on the premises of their, like, the estate, but she won't even, like, stay in the house at night, which tells you something is really wrong. And there's this beautiful subplot with the main character that just made my heart so sore. So I really loved that book. I would recommend it. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. This one, again... Riley Sager is very hit or miss for me. I see they're like, I love it or I hate it, and this was a love for me. I was terrified. We have a main character. She's basically an interior designer, and she's returning back to her childhood home, which is like this kind of mansion where her family had fled in the middle of the night. And she doesn't remember much because she was very little, but her father then goes on to write a book, like a bestseller that everyone knows about, about how they were chased out by like ghosts or like supernatural forces or something. And she's like, I don't believe this. I don't know. So she goes back to like renovate the house to sell it and things start to happen and she's going to uncover the past and it's, oh, I still get shivers thinking about it, but it was very good. People like her, this was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed this. I would strongly recommend, especially if you are a parent or a mother, please look up some warnings. This one was real, it was brutal at parts to read through this, but I think it's a really important lesson. It's about how technology and social media are can be very dangerous, especially when people overshare. The main character is like a mommy influencer and she posts everything about her life and her children's lives and someone figures out where they live, things happen, and you're also reading from her husband's perspective at the same time, which I thought was kind of added a fun humor element because he was very blunt and like hates his wife's career, even though he loves the benefits of his wife's career, like the money and stuff. So it was very amusing reading their different perspectives, but it was very high stakes, very much about how technology and social media can be very dangerous nowadays, and I found that to be very interesting. The other one I read by Ellery Adams was The Club. That one was more a good. I enjoyed it. That was the first one I read by that author. It's actually a husband and wife writing team. And this one involves like an ultra rich exclusive resort that people like wait decades to get like enlisted into. And people there are supposed to be able to escape from the paparazzi and things happen there. We have a murder that happens there and it's it's pretty crazy. Like some of the twists for this were like I don't want to say anything else because, again, I don't want to give any spoilers, but I did really enjoy that. She started it. That was just a wild ride, but it was fun. It was like a good um, bachelorette party where these girls are... In, girls? They're, they're women, of course. They're, um, like, in their 20s. 20s or 30s. And they're invited to, like, this old school friend's bachelorette party on this island. And she's now, like, fabulously wealthy because she's marrying a very wealthy man. But the catch is, is that they weren't actually very good friends to her. They were actually bullies, so it's kind of odd, but they're like, well, this is an all-exclusive, like, paid-for vacation to, like, a tropical island. Like, we're not passing it up. And, of course, like, scary things happen on the island, and it's very 
very fun, very crazy. You're reading from the different perspectives of the women, and I had a really fun time with it. 56 days, no, that was like an F for me. The idea is that this couple has only like known each other for like 56 days, and they end up moving in together because like basically people are like having to quarantine and stuff, and it's okay and they start to discover things about each other while they're living together because of course they don't actually know each other that well and it's I found it to be very predictable I wasn't really enamored with the writing style I found it kind of sluggish I liked the characters okay like they were fine but I just the ending really left me wanting more I was just kind of like okay I felt the premise was really good but the ending and the actual like twists and like motives and things behind what was happening were just kind of underwhelming for me so that's why it's kind of in the eh for me Speaking of eh, The Spare Room by Andrea Bartz. I know a lot of people loved this. This was my first Andrea Bartz. I would like to read something else from her because I know she's a very popular writer. I didn't really love this. Instead of this being a thriller, this felt more like someone was trying to write like a spicy romance because it involves a married couple. They have this beautiful mansion and they invite this uh, girlfriend of the wife to stay with them because she's in a breakup and it's during that time again where everyone's locked down so she doesn't have anywhere to stay so she ends up staying in their guest room the spare room and they end up all actually getting into a relationship together and then she ends up discovering that the woman who was there before her disappeared under mysterious circumstances so I ended up reading halfway through this it felt far it felt far more like a romance like someone wanted to write a spicy romance basically which isn't really my cup of tea um, and that's kind of what the central focus was in my opinion and then you're also like I ended up skipping to the end about halfway through the book just to see how it ended because I wanted to know like what this plot line with this missing woman was and I was just so underwhelmed by it so I was just kind of like okay like I don't know it felt like it was not marketed as the right ro like right genre to me like I felt like it was really more of like a romance with like suspenseful elements maybe it just wasn't for me personally I didn't love it I want to give the author a different chance though because maybe this was just not it for me maybe I'll find what I love the chateau I really did enjoy that that was a good like a solid good read definitely more slow burn but I did really enjoy the characters they're at this French chateau in the countryside they used to all go there as like college aged um, girls together and they're invited back when they're more into adulthood and they're all like reconnecting and it's a lot of secrets are coming out lots of friend drama very interesting and I really really enjoyed that just one look another one that was like a very solid good read this one's about a main character who actually becomes like obsessed with someone else so you're like following her around as she's becoming a stalker basically and it's really interesting to read from her perspective because I'm not a stalker so it was like weird to like descend into her mindset because you could almost justify parts of it because she was so convincing as you're reading from her perspective so very interesting I found it to be a very unique thriller so I thought that was interesting the family game I know a lot of people loved this I did not love this I thought the I thought the ending for this was weird. I'll, I'll just say it. I thought it was weird. We basically have like kind of this uh, couple. They're very like happy together and he invites her back to his family's holiday celebration and they are not like normal families. They are intense family games and when we say games we mean like you like very high state games. Um, the father-in-law gave me the creeps. Like he was really weird. His relationship with the main character seemed so inappropriate. I was like sitting there like what am I reading this is weird I loved the premise for this but I just felt like the ending I was like okay no I just I couldn't I couldn't justify it I couldn't believe it I was just not really too interested in it I liked the escape room I think that was solid it wasn't an all-time favorite but it was a fun premise we have like I think it's four or five co-workers and executives at this company that are trying to really just scale and like climb all over each other to get to the top and they are invited to an escape room like team building activity and they're all stuck and trapped in the elevator on the way to the escape room and all these secrets and lies start to come out so a thriller that really the premise for me is just right there and I had a good time with this do I think it's like the best thriller ever no but if you like the premise I would check it out I had a good time with it the only survivors by Me Megan Miranda this one was just it was okay like I don't regret reading this one as much as some of the other ones in this section but I just can't give it 
like a good. It was just... It was about these classmates who get together every year during the summer because as like high schoolers they witnessed this event and they were the only survivors for this tragic event where a lot of their class like their fellow classmates died and they were the only survivors and they know secrets they know some of the things that happened and it's just I don't know like again a good premise something I thought I would really enjoy but I just felt like parts of the plot fell really flat I felt like the ending was just kind of like okay I was just like sitting there like I mean I guess we could do that that's uh, yeah not my it was my cup of tea the only one left by Riley Sager I'm gonna say I say fantastic it definitely felt like a soap opera especially at the end it definitely got a little like crazy but it was fun crazy we have a like a, a live-in like caregiver nurse and she basically goes out to serve this lady who is very old and she cannot speak anymore and she was accused of a murder as like a young teenage like woman and like of her family's murder so it's very much like Lucy Borden style and while she's there she one night the woman is typing on her typewriter because that's how she'll communicate with people and she tells her that she wants to tell her the whole truth of what actually happened to her family so very interesting premise very very high stakes a remote location on the island I really enjoyed this one the last house guest that was good I think that was a fun summer thriller, a good beachy read. It involved two best friends, one who ended up disappearing and her trying to figure it out kind of a year later. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that one. It wasn't too distinct, but it was like a fun beachy read. The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. This one, I think I want to put in Fantastic because the ending for this one really bumped it up for me. It was a fun read. We basically have this couple who have moved with their children to this house on a cliffside and unfortunately this cliffside is a popular place for people to jump to like end themselves and he is so far the husband has been successful at talking people out of jumping so he's actually been really good at that but one night he fails to do so and he's really distraught he's really upset about it which is not like that would be natural I think for a lot of people right I would be so so distraught if that happened to me and his wife's comforting him when she discovers that he actually knew the person who jumped but he never mentioned that to her once which is really weird like why wouldn't you say to your wife oh I'm even you know this is even more difficult for me because this happened to be my you know friend from the past or whoever right and so she starts to realize that her soulmate her husband has a lot of secrets from her so very interesting the ending for this was oh it hit it hit really hard um the villa i'll say that was good it was a solid read and it involved two perspectives both from the past i think during the 70s and then present times i liked the present times one especially we're reading two two friends who are both authors and they're very competitive with each other and they take this trip to an italian villa and they're working on their novels while they're there and they're also researching the case that happened there during like the 70s which is like kind of this, I think they described it as like a Manson like group like musicians and stuff where someone ends up murdered there's a group of like young adults and there's just a lot of messiness it was never solved so I really like the premise I thought it was fun I had a really good time flying through this things we do in the dark by Jennifer Hillier this was again I would say good I enjoyed it um, basically I have like a celebrity's wife who one day is discovered in the bathroom where her husband's body is and she's covered in blood and like holding a, a razor and the police arrest her and on top of that we're going back to like flashbacks in the past following a different character because this woman is being the celebrity wife is being accused of not being who she says she is and someone's blood trying to blackmail her so it's very very interesting I thought it was a good premise I had a good time reading it you shouldn't have come here. This was, oh, I, the more I think about this one, the more my head hurts. Um, we basically have this woman and every year she likes to take like a trip on her own um, and she'll go out and she's like at an Airbnb and she doesn't realize that this man who owns the Airbnb is going to be on the premises, which is kind of weird, but she's like, okay, whatever. I'm here to like, you know, have a retreat and he's odd. He's weird. Like, He's weird. You start to suspect him of maybe being like a criminal or something, but they're also like romance. It was very romance heavy. It was really weird. The last like chapter or two for this were interesting. I liked where the author took it because it really shocked me. 
but if I could go back, I'd be like, no, please don't don't read this Amy. Like it was, you'd be fine without it. It wasn't my personal favorite. The Good Ones by Polly Stewart. This is advertised as a thriller. This isn't a thriller. This is like a coming of age story. We have like a young woman, she returns back to her hometown and she's trying to uncover what happened to her friend. And I could not for the life of me figure out why she was so obsessed with this case because this person was really not her friend. Like we go back and flashbacks and stuff and I could not, like she, they weren't friends. Like I could not figure out how they were friends but I just didn't like the main character. I thought she was so like just irritating. The only thing redeemable about this and why it's in the eh and not the bottom is because the writing style was just hauntingly like beautiful. I really really loved the writer's style but I just, this was not a thriller so I think it was not advertised correctly in that respect and I just didn't care about the characters and I also felt like the ending was like okay but it also left so many unanswered questions about characters we had been following throughout the book and I was like okay you're trying to get me to be attached to these characters the whole time and then you just don't tell me what happens to them like what and that drives me crazy so that no um the writing retreat now again I think this was in the kind of the spare room group where people either loved or hated this I it's an eh for me. I um, I think there were a lot of things that were interesting about this. I loved the fact that we have this eccentric, like, rich writer. She's inviting these young writers who want to be published, who have, like, competed in competitions. She's invited them to her, like, mansion in the middle of nowhere with the snow and everything. And they are all challenged to write a novel while they're there. I loved the premise for this. I thought there were so many things that were done well with this, but there were so many weird really graphic scenes that I was like what did I just read and then the ending for this kind of went off the rails I don't know I feel like it almost deserves to be in the middle but then it also leaves like I felt so conflicted about this one I would definitely read something else from this author in the future because I think she really has an amazing imagination and her writing style was interesting and fun it just this one wasn't for me it was it was definitely a very um I think you could use the word campy or just very out there like it went a little crazy, a little too much for me personally. Rock, paper, scissors, absolutely like top, top tier. That was, again, this was one where my jaw was absolutely on the floor. When I was reading parts of this, I had no idea, didn't see it coming. We have, again, a remote location, one of my favorites. A couple is out there, their marriage is really on the rocks. They're trying to salvage it and they start to like see people out there. They're wondering if they're being watched. Weird circumstances, really, really good. The less I say, the better. And then What Lies in the Woods, I would say fantastic. That was a really good book. Um, I just read my second, Kate Alice Marshall, which I think I'm, I might have missed, actually. I just read her book. What is it? No One Can Know. I did actually read that in December, so I should have had that on here. I would put that in fantastic, too. Both of them involve following around three different women's perspectives. What Lies in the Wood was three friends, and one of them was, like, brutally attacked, um, while the other two were nearby as teenagers and then we're exploring that years later because one of them wants to tell because their testimonies put a man behind bars but they were also liars when they were telling that so we're kind of exploring that and then no one can know I really really enjoyed as well we were following three sisters actually in that one and a like kind of murder house where their parents were murdered when they were like anywhere from late childhood to like teenage years and very interesting and again there were details that they had left out of their story originally and they're kind of now trying to piece it together. So I really enjoy her writing style. It's very fun, very bingeable. This is my tier ranking and I'm... I feel pretty good about this. I think... I think I had some really good finds this year. A lot of best and fantastics which I was really excited about. Some good repeat authors with Cheryl Lapina and Alice Sweeney overall. We had some misses from her, but overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm really excited to read more of these authors. If you have any recommendations for thrillers, I would love to hear them. Absolutely leave me a comment down below. And if you disagree or would rank books on here differently than how I rank them, let me know. I always love to hear your opinions, even if it's different than mine. That's what makes it fun, because we all have different interpretations of what we're reading. But thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy this type of content, click above. I will have a thriller playlist of my other thriller content. And please hit subscribe. I do post new book content every week 
on my channel and it's all within the mystery and thriller genre so if you enjoy that and some cozy vlogs reading vlogs you'll definitely enjoy this channel my name is Amy Marie thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon bye